Everything about the posterior interosseous nerve. Posterior approach to the radius. Be aware of the, the posterior interosseous nerve. The posterior approach to the radius provides good access to the entire dorsal aspect of the radial shaft. The principal aim of the approach is to isolate and retract the posterior interosseous nerve before exposing the most proximal parts of the radial shaft, keeping the nerve under direct observation during all stages of the subsequent procedure and protecting, protecting it from damage. The uses of posterior approach include following. Indications of the posterior approach to the radius Open reduction and internal fixation of radial fractures Treatment of a delayed union or non-union of the fracture of radius Access to the posterior interosseous nerve Decompression of the nerve Radial osteotomy Treatment of, of, of chronic osteomyelitis of radius And biopsy of treatment of the bone tumor Bone that mark is between the lateral epicondyle and least start to work in of the radius. Make a straight incision extending from the a point anterior to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus along the dorsal aspect of the forearm to a point just distant to the ulnar side of the listers tubercule at the wrist. This topographic anatomy of the forearm uh, help the surgeon to distinguish uh, the clavage between the extensor carpal radius brevis and extensor digitorum communis. Carefully uh, ins inspect the picture. It's very helpful. Internervous plan. Proximally, the internervous plane lies between the extensor carpal radius brevis muscle and the extensor digitorum communis muscle. The common aponeurus of these muscles is the clavage plane. Distantly, internervous plane lies between the extensor capillus brevis muscle and the extensor pollicis longus muscle. Take a look at this great picture. Proximally, internervous plane lies between the extensor capillus brevis muscle, which is supplied by a radial nerve, and the extensor distorum communis muscle which is supplied by the posterior interosseous nerve. The common opponent of these muscles is the clavage plane. In this plane, uh, incise the deep fascia in the line with the skin incision and identify the space between the extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor distorum communis. This plane is more obvious distally, where the abductor pollis longus and extensor pollis brevis emerge from between the two muscles. Proximally, the extensor carpi radialis brevis and the extensor distum communis share a common aponeurosis. Inside the deep fascia in line with the skin incision and identify the space between the extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor distum communis. This plane is more obvious distally, where the abductor pollis longus and extensor pollis brevis emerge from between the two muscles. Proximally, extensor carpi radialis brevis and the extensor distum communis share a common aponeurosis. Continue the section proximally, separating the two muscles, and to reveal the upper third of the shaft of the radius, which is covered by the enveloping supinator muscle below the abductor pollis longus and the extensor pollis brevis. Identify the intermuscular plane between the extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor pollis longus. Separating two muscles exposes the lateral aspect of the shaft of the radius. Continue the section proximally. Separate the two muscles so to reveal the upper third of the shaft of the radius, which is covered by the enveloping supinator muscle. Below the abductor pollis longus and extensor pollis brevis, identify the intermuscular plane between the extensor carpalis brevis and extensor pollis longus. Separating two muscles expose the radial aspect, lateral aspect of the shaft of the radius. The proximal chart, which is very important to identify the 
posterior and interosseous nerve. Supernatural muscle, cloax, the dorsal aspect of upper third of the radius. The posterior interosseous nerve runs between the, its in substance between the superficial and deep heads. The nerve emerges from between the superficial and deep heads of the supernatural muscle about one centimeter proximal to the distal edge of the muscle. At this point, it divides into branches that supply extensor of the wrist, fingers, and thumb. Two methods exist for the successful identifying and preserving this nerve as it tra traverses the muscle. First one, proximal to distal. Detached origin of extensor carpatis brevis and the part of the origin of the extensor carpatis longus from the lateral epicondyl and retract these two muscles laterally. Next, identify a posterior interior nerve proximal to the proximal end of the supinatal muscle by palpating the nerve. Second, distal to the proximal. Identity, identify the nerve as it emerges from the supinator. Note that it emerges about one centimeter proximal to the distal end of the muscle. Now, follow the nerve proximally through the substance of the muscle, taking care to preserve all muscular branches. When the nerve has been identified and preserved successfully, fully supinate the arm to bring the anterior surface of the radius into the view. Detach the insertion of the supinator muscle from the anterior aspect of the radius. Strip the supinator of the bone superior to expose the proximal third of the shaft of the radius. Resume of this uh, slide is very important. Uh, after preserving and uh, identifying of the nerve, supinate the arm and just bring the anterior surface of the radius into the view. It is very important. Exposing the middle third, two muscles, the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis, blanket this approach as they across the dorsal aspect of the radius before heading distally and radially across the middle third of the radius. Middle third, to retract them of the bone, make an incision along their superior and inferior borders. Then they can be separated easily from the underlying radius and retracted either distally or proximally, depending on the exposure that is required. Plates can be slid underneath these muscles if required for fixation. The distal third. Separate the extensor carpatis brevis from extensor pollicis longus already has led directly onto the lat lateral border of the radius. Dangers regarding the posterior interior nerve. There are two ways in which to preserve the critical posterior interior nerve, which is the key to this dissection. First, identification identification of the nerve. In 25 percentage of patients, the posterior interior nerve actually touches the dorsal aspect of the radius opposite to the bicipital tuberosity. Place Plates placed high on dorsal surface of the radius may trap the nerve underneath. Identifying and preserving the nerve in the supinator muscle is only the means of ensuring that it, it will not be trapped beneath an, any plate that is applied for the radial fracture. The dorsal aspect of the radius can be exposed in the same way, but because the posterior interior nerve actually touches the Periostum. In one of four patients, the safest procedure is to dissect the nerve out uh, fully before the stripping the muscle from the bone. Please, very carefully uh, obey the rules about this topic. It's very dangerous. Posterior interosseous nerve compression syndrome. The surgical de decompression, three main approaches. Mechanism of injury, pathophysiology. Mechanism of injury can be microtrauma from repetitive pronation, supination movements. 
can be major trauma, fracture dislocation such as a Montague fracture, radial head fracture, and space filling lesions just like gangliana, lipoma, inflammation just like rheumatoid synovitis of radiocapillar joint, or an iatrogenic injury. Posterior interosseous nerve entrapment, pattern anatomy. Five potential sites of compression include fibrous tissue anterior to the radiocapitular joint, between brachialis and brachioradialis, leash of Henry, a recurrent radial vessels that fall out across the posterior interosseous nerve at the level of radial neck, and extensor carpi radialis brevis edge. Medial proximal edge of the extensor carpi radialis brevis can cause entrapment. Arcata frost, which is proximal edge of the superficial portion of the supinator. Also, supinator muscle, distal edge, can generate entrapping. Very great didactic uh, illustration. Look at the arcata frost. Look at the extensor carpi radialis brevis medial edge. This is the shaft of supinator muscle and leash of Henry and fibrous tissue anterior the radiocapitular joint. Carefully detect this figure. Symptoms Presentation Incidence onset or often undiagnosed symptoms. Defining symptoms Pain in the forearm or, or and wrist. Location depends on to the compression. Uh, 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 for example, pain just into the lateral epicondyle of the elbow may be caused by compression of arcata frosa, weakness with finger, wrist, and thumb movements. Physical inspe uh, examination, inspection, chronic compression may cause for extensor compartment muscle atrophy, motion weakness, finger metacarpophalangeal uh, joint extension weakness. Wrist extension weakness, unable to extend wrist and in neutral or ulnar deviation. Provocative stress. Uh, resisted, sup resisted supination will increase the pain symptoms. Normal tenodosis test can identify from the tendon rupture from rheumatoid arthritis. One of the main goals of this presentation is to change the surgical decompression approaches uh, of the posterior interosseous nerve entrapment. Uh, there are uh, three or four main approaches. We would like to discuss three main approaches here. Approaches Posterior approach, anterior approach and transbrachioradial approach. The uh, posterior approach the incision begins just distal the lateral epicondyle and runs distally 6 to 8 cm between the muscle bellies of extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor digitorum communis. Supinator is identified with the pin being found in as at, at its proximal edge located within the fatty tissue. Arcata froze, fibrous edge of extensor carpi radialis brevis and the Recurrent radial vessels can be identified and decompressed. Carefully detect the uh, cleavage between the extensor carpularis and anconius. Carefully detect the uh, uh, posterior interosseous nerve under the muscle of muscle belly of the supinator muscle. Look at the arcade of frost. This uh, is the appearance of the posterior interosseous of in front of the elbow uh, under the supinator muscle, arcata of Rose, uh, and leash of Henry. The anterior approach. The incision starts on the anter anterolateral aspect of the arm, 4 cm proximal to the elbow flex increase. When the incision reaches the elbow flex increase, crease, it, it is directed medially between the biceps and brachioradius muscle to continue distally along the ulnar border of the mobile vat, brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis bodies. The subcutaneous tissues are separated and lateral subcutaneous nerve to the forearm is protected. 
fascia is divided along the brachioradial muscle, and brachioradial muscle is retracted laterally, and biceps and pronotal teres are retracted medially. Radial nerve can be identified. The anterior approach. The incision starts on the anterolateral aspect of the arm, 4 cm proximal to the elbow flex increase. When the incision reaches the elbow flex increase, crease, it is directed medially between the biceps and brachioradius muscle to continue distally along the ulnar border of the mobile vat, brachioradialis, exarsor, carpiradialis, longus, and brevis bodies. The subcutaneous tissues are separated and lateral subcutaneous nerve to the forearm is protected. Fascia is divided along the brachioradial muscle, and brachioradial muscle is retracted laterally, and biceps and pronotal teres are retracted medially. Radial nerve can be identified. The anterior approach. The incision starts on the anter anterolateral aspect of the arm, 4 cm proximal to the elbow flex increase. When the incision reaches the elbow flex increase, Crease, it is directed medially between the biceps and brachioradial muscle to continue distally along the ulnar border of the mobile vat, brachioradialis, exarsor, carpiradialis, longus, and brevis bodies. The subcutaneous tissues are separated and lateral subcutaneous nerve to the forearm is protected. Fascia is divided along the brachioradial muscle, and brachioradial muscle is retracted laterally and Biceps and pronotal teres are retracted medially. Radial nerve can be identified. Anterior approach. Identify the nerve proximally and inspect it distally for sites of compression. Pronation of the forearm and flexion of the wrist may demonstrate dynamic compression of the nerve. The compression is then undertaken via the extensor carpiradialis brevis release. Application of re recurrent radial vessels, long blood section of the arcuate of frost, and removal of the any fibrous bands present. The trans brachioradialis approach. This approach, 6 cm incision is made, con commencing the just proximal to the radial head, 3 cm lateral to the biceps tendon. Look at the figure. Lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm is preserved. Fascia split and then brachioradial muscle belly splint. Radial nerve can be can then be located and the decompression of the posterior interstitial nerve via division of the arcuate frost, extensor carpiradius brevis, branches of the radial recurrent artery, leash of Henry, and can be uh, all with this procedure. Uh, nerve can be released. Look at the picture of incision. I would like to thank Professor Jihangir Titik, who contributed my orthopedic hand surgery knowledge and changed my life.